In this video, I want to show you some really cool tips that professional audio guys know about that you can apply to your video workflow. I actually used to be one of those audio guys. It's what I started doing. It's what I'm qualified to do. I'm also a musician and songwriter. So I am one of those audio nerds. So let me share some knowledge, show you some techniques, and I've got some game-changing plugins that are completely free, which you just, I mean, it's a no-brainer. You've got to get them. And I'm hoping that it's going to be informative and entertaining along the way. If you're new around here, I'm Harv. And I have lots of videos about videography and audio, gear and reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. It just means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. I've also timestamped everything so you can just skip to the bit you want. And these videos are not brought to you by any kind of sponsor or uh, company at all, uh, except for maybe my Patreon backers. And the way that works is any funds from Patreon go back into the channel so I can do unbiased reviews and then I give the gear to my backers, to you guys. Uh, if that's of interest, do check it out. Everything is linked below. So, onward. Tip one is to treat the audio side of your project exactly in the same way as if you were mixing a song in a digital audio workstation. What I mean by this is when mixing audio tracks in Logic or your preferred software, we have all of our instruments on individual tracks and all of them feed into a single stereo track, which is called a master bus. This is the last stage before your audio is outputted. So this is where guys load up the processing tools to ensure everything is sounding its best. So with that in mind, I feel like we should be doing exactly the same with our audio in our video projects, but there isn't really an equivalent of a master bus. So what do we do? Well, in my editor of choice, which is Final Cut, the best way to do this is to select the entire project by hitting Command A and then make it into a compound clip by hitting Option G. That way you can add effects that affect your whole project. Of course, there are other ways of doing this in your preferred editing software, like Premiere Pro has their nesting function and in DaVinci Resolve, it's the same, it's called Compound Clip. Tip two, and following on from tip one, and I wanna show you the first of our awesome free plugins that you just gotta get. And it's called Buster SE from a producer called Analog Obsession. This is basically a fantastic compressor that models the style of compression you get from the master bus compressors on the big mixing desks you find in commercial studios. This one is actually inspired by the SSL 4000 series bus compressors and other companies have made great software versions of this like UAD and there's an official SSL version, but holy crap, these are expensive. Of course, and obviously, all of the plugins that I'm mentioning, I will link in the description so you can just go there. Now we can load Buster SE onto our entire project and used subtly, it will help to balance the levels in your project. You can see the settings I'm using, I don't want the meter moving much. This is just helping to add a bit of glue to my audio. Man, this is an awesome plugin. Just to give you a really quick demo on a voiceover, this is just an unprocessed signal. And then when I switch Buster SE on, you can hear, hopefully it will sound a bit, a little more balanced. And the nice thing about this style of compressor, what they're really known for is adding a kind of finish to your audio, kind of, you know, almost polishing it. Tip three is to prevent clipping, and I can hear you starting to type already. Obviously, prevent clipping, but hear me out. So you've got your voiceover track on your project, and it's sounding good, and obviously you're making sure that it's not clipping, but then you go and add background audio, music maybe, and you may not have considered that this is, this is adding, you know, a certain amount of decibels on top of that, and it potentially, could be clipping your audio without even knowing about it. The solution, of course, is to add a limiter to the very end of your plugin chain. Personally, I like the limiter that's built into the basic Apple compressor. I like the vintage opto mode, switch the limiter on and change the ratio to one to one and threshold to zero. This just ensures that the compressor part of this plugin isn't doing anything. Although this compressor is actually really good too. A lot of videography based YouTube videos on the subject of limiters will just recommend dumping a limiter on your project and then just increasing the, the volume of your project until it's slamming against that limiter. As a former slash current audio guy, I recommend against doing this. And that's just because in my opinion, 
Limiters are designed just to do one thing, and that's to stop your audio from clipping. I really don't like what a limiter does to audio when it's used like a compressor and the audio is slammed against it, because to me it sounds just nasty and digital sounding. My advice is to use something like the plugin from the previous tip, the Buster SE, and let that do the work. It, it'll sound far more musical, and then you can have your limiter after that just to catch the peaks and stop it from clipping. Tip four, high pass everything. Yep, everything. Sub bass frequencies eat up so much of your available headroom. In fact, and very simply put, the lower the frequency, the more headroom that will be consumed, relatively speaking. Plus, many of the speakers that people are using now to consume content can't recreate sub bass frequencies. So really, we're best cutting them out and, you know, and gaining some headroom, or at least claiming it back. So in this case, you may want to add instances of EQ to each element in your project. Just use your ears whilst listening with good headphones or speakers and drag the high pass filter up until it sounds like it's lacking bass and then back off a little. It's also good to add an EQ to your whole project compound clip with a high pass filter set somewhere in the range of 30 to 75 Hertz. This is a just in case move. Like I said, High pass, everything. Just make sure that your EQ is placed before any kind of compression, because otherwise all of that sub bass will trigger your compressors and you don't want that. And that is a golden rule. And just so you can hear and see the difference between having a high pass off and then switching it on, here it's off obviously, and then when I switch it on on my preamp, it sounds like this, and I've also added a high pass filter afterwards as well, just in case. And you might notice a small jump in perceived volume, and that's just because the compressors are able to do their thing without being triggered by sub bass. Tip five, always DS your vocals. And here we have actually the next of my recommended free plugin downloads. And it's called TDR Nova from Tokyo Dawn Records. It's a parallel dynamic equalizer, meaning it can selectively reduce certain frequencies depending on their volume. This really is an unbelievable piece of software and I cannot believe it's free, but I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong. <laughs> so I recommend adding this to your um, vocal tracks regardless of whether you think it needs de-essing or not because it will only be triggered if it detects S's. It's not like trying to remove these frequencies using an EQ, which is just a dumb, destructive way to do it. There's a preset for de-essing, which I just set and forget, and it works brilliantly without coloring the sound. Here we are then, let's do a before and after, even though I'm sure lots of you are familiar with DS's. I'll just say something, you know, random. Sony G Master lenses are subpar value, and then with it on, Sony G Master lenses are subpar value. Incidentally, Tokyo Dawn Records also have free versions of a compressor, a limiter, and an EQ. You are welcome. Tip six is to try something called soft clipping. And this is a really pro audio technique that I'd wager most video guys don't know about. Soft clipping is a technique to increase the perceived volume of your project without slamming your audio into a limiter. Sounds like something not to be messing with, and that could be true, but this can be a really useful technique when used subtly. The way that I think of soft clipping is it, it gives your audio kind of an imperceptible layer of fur, almost like it's grown a layer of moss or something. There is a free plugin that I can recommend to use for soft clipping, and it's called Clipper from Initial Audio. Just drop it on your audio, keep the default settings, and you'll notice a small volume jump, but not necessarily a jump in the overall level. Personally, I like the soft clipper that's built into the Apple compressor. I tend to reduce the input gain by a couple of dB, switch the distortion to soft, and we're left with the same overall level, but with a little higher perceived volume. Here we go then, let's do some soft clipping, and this is without, and this might be a bit tricky because my preamp that I use is based around the Neve 1073 circuit, which does tend to add a little bit of that kind of soft clipping naturally, but here goes, this is without, and then when I add it in, it just adds this sort of soft 
you know, little boost in the volume, you know, that kind of bit of moss that I mentioned. And what do you think? Do you like it? Like I said, use this subtly because it can get a little too mossy quite quickly. Um, but it is a really good tool to have in your back pocket if you need something to stand out just a little more, you know, without having to jack the volume up. Anyway, now let's take everything we've learned in this video, grind it up and make a delicious espresso of tips to take away. Compound clip your entire project to create your own master bus, and then you can load your effects on and guarantee that you're gonna get a good sounding project. Try a bus compressor. They sound so sweet, and I see no reason why these shouldn't be used on video projects as they are on audio. Don't forget to apply a limiter at the very end of your audio plugin chain, but whatever you do, do not slam it. High pass everything. I guarantee you are not gonna miss that sub bass, so claim back some headroom and high pass. Always DS. That TDR Nova is amazing software. It's a must get, so you know, get it. Give soft clipping a try. It may not be for you, but it's a really handy thing to know. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? Definitely let me know in the comment section. I'll be down there as much as I can. I've now filmed over 300 of these videos about videography and audio, of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.